a radical, radical guys, a radical as they come. And we love the film, uh, the guns in that realm. All right, that's such an inside story. All right, so uh, Katie's going to come up here, Katie Halper, and she's going to give me the dog, and she's going to bring on, she's going to bring on somebody that could tell you that the whole Roger Stone thing was a complete farce, and Russia Gate was a complete farce, and all of that. Someone that had investigated it and, and disseminated it better than anybody consistently, and that's Aaron Maté. But we're going to bring on Katie Halper. She's going to do a set and bring on Aaron Maté. Katie. peace movement, the civil rights movement. So when I was a five-year-old, I thought that my mom, uh, she told me she went to the March on Washington, but I thought that she uh, had a sleepover with her friend who told her about a dream he had and that his name was King Martin Luther. But my mom did not have a sleepover with Martin Luther King. Although, let's be honest, a lot of other women did. <laughs> ha! Ha! Whoa! Ooh. Why are you condemning Martin Luther King? Not cool. This is not a space for doing Martin Luther King. Let's take him out of here. Uh, so uh, she did, though, come close to having uh, a sleepover with another civil rights leader who doesn't have as much cred as MLK. 
Um, my mom did briefly date Mary Berry, <laughs> who would become the mayor of D.C. before being forced to step down amidst the crack cocaine prostitution scandal, sex work scandal. Like, we haven't all been there. Raise your hand if you have They met dur at a SNCC uh, event. You know, out of all the student nonviolent coordinating committee meetings in all the towns and in all the world, she had to walk into his. <laughs> but it's not as cool like when your mom dates Mary Berry. You can't really use that the way you could. Like if my dad was ever yelling at me and I didn't want to listen to him, if my mom had dated MLK or Malcolm X, I'd be like, I don't have to listen to you. You're not my father. <laughs> not really my father. It doesn't work with Mary Berry. I know that's her way. Um, what else? So yeah, so I'm a Jew, but I'm a secular Jew. Yeah, thank you. So I'm a secular Jew. Um, so we didn't celebrate any like religious holidays. We just the only religious holiday we celebrated was Passover, and I thought that was like a black holiday because uh, we started talking about the slaves in Egypt, uh, and then the civil rights movement, well, also slavery, and then we'd wind up in like. Uh, the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And speaking of that, hello, okay, but speaking of the Israeli Palestinian, uh, the Israeli occupation of Palestine, you know, Julian Assange gave us a lot of valuable information about that. So we know about like the attempts of Israel and Turkey to overthrow Assad. We know that Israel wanted to keep Gaza in like the lowest economic position possible. And the news out of Israel is always very dismal. Uh, very dismal, understatement, right? But one of the scariest stories I ever heard from Israel was this woman, this Jewish woman, who um, met a Palestinian man. She didn't know he was Palestinian, though. She thought he was Jewish. They met at a supermarket. They had sex in the supermarket. <laughs> right? Where are my Jewish sisters at? We've all been. Met sex in the supermarket. And then she found out he wasn't Jewish. She took him to court. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. This is so dystopian. She took him to court, and he was convicted of rape via deception. Oh. No, I'm not even kidding. I know it's not kidding, right? And that's so disturbing on so many levels. Um, but it's also was very disturbing to me, extra disturbing to me, because I'm kind of ethnically ambiguous. So just like on a self-interested level, it's like I could be a serial rapist. Yeah. That was supposed to be funny, but I'm glad you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so like, oh, we call. Me too. Yes, me too. Very, very, very anyway, um, honestly, I'll just leave you guys with uh, these wise words, which is that I'm really surprised that Joseph Biden isn't more sympathetic to Julian Assange. After all, he too had served time behind bars when he was arrested trying to visit. Nelson Mandela. <laughs> he also knows what it's like to be deprived of sunlight because of his time toiling in the mines. And he knows what it's like to stare power in the eye and not back down, which he did with Corn Pop. <laughs> A bad dude. But uh, speaking of bad dudes, I'm going to have to bring up a good dude. Uh, how do you like that segue? You're welcome, Aaron. I'll say. So we're bringing up this guy. I'm a little biased because I do co-host a show with him called Useful Idiots, but he's a, an amazing journalist. I believe one of his nicknames is Buzzsaw, Aaron. Um, he's a great journalist, great uh, co-host. He does amazing work, and he uh, is someone who, all of his critics, they can only smear him. They can never engage in the substantive arguments about his work. So bringing up to the stage, Andrew... What? Why did I say that? That was so weird. Sorry, I just got really distracted. No, I know his name. Thank you. Very much. I talk to him all the time. That's so weird. Okay, sorry. Guys, edit that out. Bring up to the stage. I'm hot in this mask. Bring up to the stage, Aaron Mate.